Item number one on our agenda is special presentations, and we have none this evening. Item number two are the issuance of notes and bonds. We have none this evening. Item number three is the consent agenda, and we have no consent agenda this evening. Item number, or the item we have here, we had the community committee reports in the last um, council packets, and I'm not sure if there's any items under there to discuss this evening. Um, item number four are public comments. This is an opportunity for the public to address council on an item that is not on our agenda. Do you have an item you'd like to t bring yeah, to the council's attention? Mm -hmm. All right, item seven is unfinished business. The first item we have is 7A. It's uh, Johnson Drive, Nall to Lamar, the design concept resolution. Okay. I have several motions. Uh, I talked to Mike today, and we are going to use the KISS form, keep it simple. So uh, I hope you will all bear with me, but there will be 10 different motions that I will be proposing. We'll go through them one at a time. Given the, for the various forms of this resolution that have been discussed, as well as all the individual components that have been considered, tonight I will be making a series of motions to keep things as simple as possible. I would like to first consider the baseline project, followed by the Johnson Drive Interceptor, and finally each of the various streetscape, hardscape, and decorative project elements. Therefore, number one, Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the baseline Johnson Drive design concept described in sections one and two of the proposed resolution at an estimated cost of $5.3 million to be funded out of the City's transportation and capital improvement funds. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on this motion? <clears throat> Mr. Bruce? Is this one time? If, if, if this is the motion that's before council is on the base motion of um, the base project costs on Johnson Drive. Okay. Now, do you want me to go over the whole thing or shall I just start where I finish? So why don't you start where you finish? Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there any other discussion on the uh, motion that's on the table? Mr. Andre? Just quickly, I want to make sure I understand uh, the approach that Ms. Gibbs has taken. I think I do, but just before I take my first vote, I want to make sure I do. I see that there's 10 motions in here, the idea being that we're going to vote on nine of these as kind of individual components, and then once we're through that process of nine, would it, whichever ones get a majority, will then be basically rolled into the resolution and re-voted on com as a package on number 10. Is that... The ones that are approved will be all considered in number 10. That's what I want to make sure is we'll come back and do a final... Because if we don't do the... If we don't approve number 10, all votes we take one through nine don't matter. There you go. That's what I want to make sure understood. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. I just have a couple comments. Uh, Steve Schoengert, 5703 West 53rd Street. Uh, I'm here tonight just to appeal. Uh, that's my appeal. Thank you. My name is Margaret McConnell. I live at 5226 Lamar. I've lived there for 58 years. I'm the mayor over in Fairway. And I just wanted to make a, a final comment for uh, clarification. Mayor, on the, mayor uh, Wiley, we, we usually yes. have people also give their address. I'm just going 5403 Thanks. Windsor Lane, Fairway, Kansas. All right. All right. Is there any other discussion for the motion that's on the floor? Please call the question. Andre? Aye. Cowdery? Aye. Gibbs? Aye. Crane? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Aye. Okay. Item number two. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the Johnson Drive Interceptor as described in Section 3 of the proposed resolution at an estimated additional cost of $2.3 million to be funded by an additional $5 per month ERU stormwater utility fee for a five-year period starting in the year budget year 2013. All right, is there a second? I second it. All right, is there any discussion? I, um, on, yes, Mrs. Well, I'm going to have an amended motion, so I don't know at what point that plays into this. Um, should we, why don't we have some discussion and then you can share and we'll have discussion on that. Okay. That was now it's you. Well, thank you very much. It's not the first time I've stumbled and fell. 
I seem to get up yeah, and keep moving. Stumble, Mr. Yeah, but that's a long ways to fall. Uh, but in any event, what I just wanted to remind you of is that uh, we do a, 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 a interpret a lot of the water that we're getting as uh, far exceeds the capacity of our creek, and that when we would look in any type of design project, such as the interceptor project, that it will address the flooding issues in Fairway. Again, we would like to work with you in a cooperative and collaborative effort in order to restrict the flow of water into Fairway, regardless of what level it's coming in at, whether it's higher or lower than whatever studies that we've had, and this new study and this new epitus that we've putting on this issue through the information that I furnished to the council is, is going to be uh, information did you well, the stuff that the Burns and McDonald uh, documents that we furnished to you and then the other enclosure that I gave regarding my letter to Lee Kallenberger that uh, I they just emailed uh, me yesterday yes yes that letter uh, it was it, from like about a year or so ago yeah it was in uh, yeah. 2011 well, Okay. So, I mean, these types of things articulate our, our position in this. We would like you, before you break uh, ground on any project, to at least give us some consideration to review the engineering and to see how it impacts on Fairway. Well, just in, I guess, in fairness to the Mission City Council, in March of 2010, mm -hmm. the Fairway City Council voted um, to adopt the recommendation after Jerry Johnson, who was Fairway's stormwater engineer with Schaefer, mm -hmm. Klein, and Warren, and then directed him to prepare a letter for you to sign, which adopted what Black and Beach, who was missions engineers, had prepared. And so, um, and so they had adopted that and asked you to sign it. And it's a letter then, I think, that you showed me sometime in March of 2010 that you told me you were not going to sign. That's right. And have then refused to sign that since then, mm -hmm. even though your council had mm -hmm. acquiesced to it, and that's what the engineers... They, they acquiesced to get my recommendation on the letter, to right. endorse it. And like right. I said... So I, I just think in fairness to our council, if, if since there are several new members of council, they need to understand that history, that Fairway has been engaged, Fairway has been involved. It's just you don't agree with what the engineers have had to say. That's only part of it. But that is tr exactly true. Mm -hmm. And you want them to design to a different than the 100-year standard, no. which is what no, I didn't say our that. engineers have designed. I didn't say that. That's been the accepted standard. And I've also said we don't question the engineering on top of that premise. It's the underlying premise that we have a disagreement with. Okay. Right. Yes. You have a disagreement with the underlying with the, premise. Under okay. which the engineering was founded. Okay. And I think after the study and so forth that we'll have at least a chance to explore the facts and to define the issues and the remedies for the future. Excellent. And that's what I am okay. here to tell you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Is there um, some, Mrs. Kring, you had? I have an amended motion. Okay. What is that? After going back to review the city stormwater processes and supporting funding vehicles addressed from previous City of Mission CDC meetings, recommendations from the Stormwater Task Force chaired by former Council Member John Weber, and previous documentation from the City Council of Fairway, I would like to propose that we approve the Johnson Drive Interceptor with no increase in ERUs. This would have to move the date out to possibly 2014. By then, the East Gateway would be underway with revenues from their bonds coming back to the city one part in a lump sum and the other part over a period of time. Please remember that in March 2010, the city of Fairway did approve unanimously, with the exception of the mayor, that our engineering principles were right on target and approved us moving forward with that SMAC application, which would have provided and afforded mission an opportunity of levying 75% of this funding with the county and 25% with the city. Um, I'm hopeful that we have SMAC conversations ongoing with the City of Fairway again. And Madam Mayor, I hereby move that the Johnson Drive Interceptor be approved with no increase in ERUs to the community at large. All right. Is there a second to her motion? This is what you asked for. Okay, well, I'll second. you'll second it? Yeah. All right. Is there any discussion to be had on having the um, adopting the interceptor without um, increasing the ERUs for the budget period of 2013. Mr. Shepard, did you have a comment? Well, it's more a question. I, I don't understand. I don't understand the motion, uh, or I, I don't understand it in terms of what it does to 
the interceptor in terms of what it does to the overall design of Johnson Drive, what it does to the overall timeline of the project, because what I heard really clear last week and what I've heard really clear um, ever since we started this conversation is that the city needs to make a commitment to downtown Mission. The city of Mission needs to make a decision and the city of Mission needs to identify where the funding is going to come from to make that investment in downtown Mission. And my concern, and it's only because I, again, as I said, don't understand the motion, um, my concern is we're saying this is what would be really great for downtown Mission but we're really not going to make the tough decision to tell you how we're going to pay for it. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that three other things will happen, and then we'll do the interceptor. And I just need to understand what I'm missing. Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay, we have a base motion, and I think Council Member Kring's um, amendment says that the interceptor's in, that the five dollar ERU that's pr pr proposed for 2013 she wants removed deferred. deferred and that the funding be considered again when we put the 2014 budget together I've had a lot of conversations um, over the last couple of days in terms of what is the schedule for the um, interceptor for Johnson Drive, how does this all fit together? When we proposed our budget, when we put all of this work together, our assumption was we were going to get to construction October. Given that we've picked up this month delay in terms of deciding what we're going to do, and we were actually trying to give a decision a month and a half ago on Johnson Drive, we're not going to get started until December, which means that by the time we get started, we wouldn't need to necessarily issue any temporary notes to pay for this until 2014. You have the Gateway Project, which is coming. And Mr. Quinn asked me the same question, I want to say, two days ago. And I said, you can defer it, but understand, if the Gateway doesn't happen, you come back and you arrive at this same point a year from now, increasing it $5, because it's already in the design and it's going to be constructed because that's the design that was approved. Yeah, Mr. Shepard. One other question, thank you. So what does, where also is the conversation with SMAC as it relates to the 75% reimbursement? Um, and how does this delay in Johnson Drive from October to December or early 14 allow that conversation to play out? The SMAC funding, by the time we receive a letter, which from what I can tell, it's, it's not imminent. I would argue that there's this engineering study that's being proposed, and my guess is that takes 12 to 18 months. Our PES would then have to be approved. That then puts our project on a list, and then you're talking two or three years before, based on its rank and its order, before it would be high enough on the list. So you're talking about if you're going to wait for SMAC funding to do the interceptor, four or five years. Yes, Ms. Cowdery. Madam Mayor, um, the word deferred, of course, concerns me. Also, in this baseline proposal, I um, understood there were about $750,000 worth of stormwater improvements, just not the interceptor. Um, we also have um, options to the Johnson Drive interceptor. And um, when we talk about SMAC money, we're talking about if we could do something that Fairway would agree with us upon, if we could get some intergovernmental cooperation and some regional stormwater solution, which is the way you should look at stormwater solutions is regionally, then we could get smack down the road and maybe take some of the alternate options that are on the table for stormwater management in the city of Mission. Well, um for your edification, we have worked on regional approaches both with Fairway and with Mission Hills and with Roland Park over the years, and that is how we've had the plans that we've had thus far and as we've moved forward. And as a matter of fact, when the city of Mission traveled and was able was successful in securing federal funding, Fairway got an equal amount of federal funding because we were working on it as a regional solution. So we have been working on it as a regional solution. I, under, I understand that. I just understand, too, that they're having a problem. And um, I just don't see why we can't cooperate and solve 
it regionally. Things come up. You think you have a problem solved? Of course you do. And sometimes you find out you don't. And 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 if there's more study that needs to be done, well, I don't see why. Ms. Cowdery, the council adopted our study. Okay. They had adopted the recommendation, and and their engineer approved it. They've had several engineers that have approved it. It's there's a. It, Ms. Mayor Wiley created a different uh, stormwater group who wants a, who does not believe in the basic premise that a number of the stormwater engineers use when they come up. With I understand that they so, had some flooding, so they're they're looking missions at had, why missions had flooding, and with a lot of the places, all of the improvements we've made have improved the flooding in Fairway. Anytime there's a high water event, I go check it out. And there are places that don't flood anymore, and there are still a number of homes that are on Brook Ridge Drive that people did not want to be bought out by FEMA because they like where they live, and they are at the flood stage. So this, what we're moving forward and doing is going to continue to reduce the peak flow going in. It's going to reduce that height of the flood, of, or of the waters that at a high water event would go into fairway. Mr. Quinn? I have a question on that. Uh, what Jennifer mentioned, the deferred, what was the, the difference there between deferred and what might say removed? Well, removed means ne not at all. We won't consider it. It will be deferred to the next budget cycle. And it'll be brought up again and addressed in the council <coughs> session, just like we did last week. Well, removed would mean that... <coughs> it's removed not. for this budget cycle. Yeah. Defer. Deferred. Deferred. If been, we use the word removed, removed it, it wouldn't mean that you could well, never bring it up again. It no, just, absolutely not. But if you say deferred, it almost sounds like you're definitely going to bring it up again. That's Removed is fine problem. because it'll have to be brought yeah. up in another budget cycle. Not only do we have the gateway on one end of the town with potential revenue coming in the next year and a half, we also have the other end of town, which is the West Gateway, which seems to be thriving right now with free birds and Subway and, and Culver's and Chick-fil-A Chick coming. And we have seen no, no revenue out of that area for a, quite a while. So I'm confident that the city's moving in the right direction, and we can remove that ERU right now. That's my motion. Good girl. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this item? Now, this is the amendment to the base motion. Right. This is to um, this is to amend to remove the additional five dollar a month ERU for the period of five years starting in 2013. What? Absolutely, Mr. Shepard. I think uh, Councilman Quinn brings up a good point about deferred or removed. Um, you know, this council can't bind the next council on you know how it's going to manage its budget even if it's the eight of us i mean we just we can't carry it year to year um and it just seems to me that if it's an important enough of a project uh, regardless of the timing that we as a governing body ought to make the commitment that this is indeed what we're going to do can i make a comment yes mrs crane let me not uh, get forlorn on this one point. The stormwater interceptor, and I do have a science background, I'm not just off the top of my head. The stormwater conveyance down Johnson Drive and the way it's put together and the process that we've gone through over the past several years is of utmost importance. It definitely needs to be done. I totally trust Black and Beach. I think they did an excellent job, came together, was very transparent with the information. The interceptor definitely needs to be done. But if there's a possibility of moving forward with some of the other revenues that potentially will be coming in in the 2013 time frame and moving to 2014 for another budget consideration, that's the movement I make in the motion. For an amendment. Mayor. Yes. Mrs. May Bill. I ask Mike if that's feasible? Yes. I saw, is, was there anyone out of the audience that wanted to address council on this? Okay. So in other words, you're saying the motion? Well, what we're, we're voting on is right, right now we're voting on to remove the $5 a month ERU stormwater utility fee for a period of five years starting in 2013 budget year from the motion. So the project goes ahead as planned. We're just removing the ERU. Well, That's correct. Okay. All right. So are you ready? Let's call the question. Andre? No. Calgary? No. Gibbs? Aye. Crane? Aye. Quinn? Aye. 
Shepard? No. Vandenberg? No. I'm never going to be happy. <laughs> okay, so the yeah, amendment the fails. Yes. All right. Okay, so now is there any more discussion on this interceptor? Stand up. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. Robert Hartman, 5140 Halsey, Shawnee, Kansas, mission business owner. And what what is the second phase of the Johnson Drive interceptor? Costing that also will not receive SMAC money. Second phase is going to will be, I mean, if we go through the same process. It'll be <coughs> SMAC eligible. I'm going to let Mr. Scanlon address that. As we work with our downstream neighbors, our hope is that we can prove that there's no negative impact, as there is right now within the PES of the interceptor. Once that becomes the official position of fairway that there is no negative impact, then our interceptor project in total can go back onto the SMAC list. Including the portion that's being built now? The portion that's being built now can't. Madam Mayor? Yes, Ms. Did we Catherine. just vote that interceptor down? No. Mm -mm. No. You voted to keep the interceptor and charge everybody $5 a month. Huh? No, 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 we did not vote that. No, we didn't. No, no. We, we voted oh, we didn't vote. The, the amendment was voted down. Correct. The amendment, the amendment that to, alleviated the five dollars was voted down. The amendment to take the five dollars out was voted down. Okay, Debbie, is there any other discussion? Well, that you, there's don't attack. inter ward council abuse. Oh, <laughs> Okay, let's call the question. To make we oh. we might want to make sure we're all on the same page on what Help this question is. Why don't you read your motion Thank again? Thank you. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the Johnson Drive Interceptor as described in Section 3 of the proposed resolution at an estimated additional cost of $2.3 million to be funded by an additional $5 per month ERU stormwater utility fee for a five-year period starting in the 2013 budget year. Okay. Please call the question. Andre? Aye. Calgary? Nay. Uh, Gibbs? Aye. Crank? Nay. Uh, Quinn? Nay. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Nay. Okay. All right. So, ma Madam Mayor. I appreciate it. So my question earlier about process, this is a good example to make sure, again, I understand and maybe others who may be confused understand it. Number two just failed. So when we get to that will not be included when we get to number 10 on the motion. Correct. I just want to make sure I understood that correctly. We'll review it at the end. Thank you. I'm okay. just taking notes as we go. Okay, item number three. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the additional pedestrian and flashing beacons at a cost of $70,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolutions and its addendum. Is there any discussion on this item? There's a second. Oh, do we have a second? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I did have a discussion. Yes, Mr. Shepard. As it relates to, look, I think making downtown Johnson Drive is critical in terms of making it pedestrian friendly. But is there any conversation now or in the future about being able to stop traffic as opposed to alert traffic when we're going to try to cross Johnson Drive? I know we're going to bump out the corners and narrow the lanes, but I mean, getting from one side to the other, anywhere up and down Johnson Drive? Um, there's been, I would say, on and off discussion related to the Johnson Drive Woodson intersection and that traffic signal. John Swart, which is one of the primary property owners there, his anecdotal evidence is that that traffic signal isn't really needed and he has probably the most property that's within that intersection. If you talk to some of the residents, there's a belief that the traffic signal is needed at certain times of the day. So what I would tell you, in addition to this pedestrian flashing beacon, we're going to be very cognizant of that intersection. And our fallback position, and the one we talked about last night after the meeting when we heard some concerns, is to maybe produce an intersection that's not a whole lot different than what Broadmoor and Martway is today, 
which is a four-way stop that you could you could conceivably put a four-way stop. It would actually function better than the one that's been at Broadmoor and Martway for the last 35 years. Cowdery. Madam Mayor, I just did want to reiterate that there were a lot of concerns from the um, business owners that were there at the meeting last night about the safety of pedestrians and the um, safety of people trying to back up at that intersection, especially between four and six. Thank you. Any other discussion? Please call the question. Andre? Nay. Calgary? Nay. Gibbs? Aye. Crane? Aye. Miller? Oh, sorry. Uh, Quinn? Nay. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Nay. <coughs> Item number four. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve upgraded lighting to decorative matching east of Knoll at a cost of $140,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolutions and its addendum. Second. All right, is there any discussion on this item? Please call oh, Mr. Shepard. Just remember, if you're a private developer coming to town, we would make you do this. <coughs> Okay, that's very true. And there were business owners there last night that felt that it would look nice to continue that lighting up Johnson Drive. Uh, please call the question. Andre? Aye. Calgary? Nay. Gibbs? Aye. Crane? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Aye. All right, item number five, Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the additional seat walls for planters, non-structural, at a cost of $85,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolution and its addendum. Second. All right, is there any discussion on this item? How many, how many seat walls would that entail? Um, I don't recall exactly how many. What they wanted to use them for was for the elevation changes that they could blend it in um, along Johnson Drive. I believe Martin had a number, didn't you, Martin? $1,000 Martin, do you know how many, or Justin? Okay, well, while they're finding that, we have a citizen who would like to make a comment. Kim Blake, 6620 Null Drive. Um, this has to do with the seat walls for $85,000. I did look at pictures of the seat walls. They look nice. They're not necessary. Uh, you still have the curve. If I could answer the, the question about the, the quantities of this, within the base project there's 290 uh, feet of seat wall that would be used to make up grade in certain spots on Johnson Drive where the side street comes in and it's a rapid elevation change. T to stay with the, the ADA requirements, there's some seat walls that are going to be used to make up grade. This item would add an additional 300 feet of seat wall to carry that appearance and that style throughout the rest of the project uh, as opposed to continuing with without seat walls and, and just kind of curb landscaping closer to the ground. So, <clears throat> so people could that work in the businesses and go around town could actually eat lunch out there in the summertime. Is that correct? They have somewhere to sit? Certainly. Yep. There you go. Yes, Ms. Cobb. I just wanted to um, say that there are benches in the baseline Johnson Drive project. Okay. There's seat walls in the baseline. Yeah. Right? That's, that, correct. that's correct. That is correct. So this is just for more seat walls. That would be correct. Okay. That's what he said. Is there any other discussion? Please call the question. Andre? Aye. Cowdery? Nay. Gibbs? Aye. Kring? Aye. Mil oh, sorry. Quinn? Aye. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Nay. Nay. Okay, item number six. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the add in decorative arches to at a cost of $680,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolution and its addendum. Okay, is there a second? Second. Oh. Is there any discussion on this item? <laughs> this one is too this rich is for my blood, blood right now. Yeah. Would, it, would it be a little cheaper if we got six of these? <laughs> 
cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> Well, I know. I, well, we need to. That's okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's. I second it, Dave. <laughs> For the record, I was looking at seven. I said six. So I seconded. I uh, will be voting no. You can withdraw. I needed to give us a free. A free just talk. Just I talk asked the mayor, but she said that'd be out of orders. Oh, there it is. Let's just go. Any any discussion? Okay. Let's call the question. Okay. Okay. Nay. Calgary? Nay. Gibbs? Nay. Crane? Nay. Quinn? Nay. Shepard? Nay. Vandenberg? Nay. Okay. Okay. Our next item on the, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is good. Okay, item number seven. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the added color to sidewalk construction, entire length of the project at a cost of $200,000, as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolution and its addendum. Second. Is there a second? We're yes. on item seven. I want to make sure I'm reading the right item. Yes, second. All right. Is there some discussion on this item? This is to continue the sidewalks that we've got in the east, in our east gateway. Yes, Mr. Shepard? All I would say is what I said about lighting. If you're a private developer, this would be, this would not be an option. This would be an expectation that you would indeed do. And I don't know how we can hold ourselves to a different standard, particularly while we're talking about uh, downtown Mission. Mrs. Crane? My concern would be maintenance on the coloring. If it discolors, I don't know what our... Um, life longevity of the coloring of the sidewalk would be, but I, I would be interested in knowing that. Um, I think somebody brought that up last night, but I don't remember. Do you remember the answer, Justin? Please. Hmm. Colored concrete discolors over time, just like regular concrete does. So, matching that color when you go to replace it 20 years in the future is is more difficult. Yes. Five years in the future. Or, or repair. Is possible? To do any repair, patch, right. won't match. Will not match. That's all there is. Thanks, Justin. Thank you. <coughs> any other discussion? Please call the question. Andre? Nay. Calgary? Nay. Gibbs? Nay. Crane? Nay. Quinn? Nay. Shepard? Aye. Vandenberg? Nay. Item number eight. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the added concrete colored intersection at Lamar at a cost of $60,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolution and its addendum. Is there a second? Second. All right, now this is uh, what they showed on the model so that it would end cap what is at Nolan and Johnson Drive, so it would signify when you're entering that downtown district. Now, is there any discussion on this item? It, it looks like brick. It's not brick, is it? No, it's, it's just concrete. Not. It's okay. a pressed, con stamped concrete. And they, one of the reasons they want to do the concrete is because the, the inter intersections hold up better with concrete. Call the question. Andre. Nay. Calgary. Nay. Gibbs. Aye. Crane. Aye. Quinn. Nay. Shepard. Aye. Vandenberg. Nay. Item number nine. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the added concrete colored intersection at Woodson at a cost of $55,000 as described in Section 4 of the proposed resolution and its addendum. Okay, now this item, just for those who were not at the meeting, one of the things that they wanted to do is sort of highlight that Woodson intersection so that it would be different um, given the issues with the removal of the traffic light. So this um, was looked at uh, not only as amenity but also as something that would be a protection for pedestrians. Is there any discussion no, on this item? We don't have a second, I don't believe. Oh, is there a second? Second. I seconded it. Okay. Is there any discussion on this item? 
Did you want to have discussion, Mr. Andre, or were you just sharing? Just, I was waiting for the second. So. All right. Please call the question. Andre. Nay. Calgary. Nay. Gibbs. Aye. Kring. Nay. Quinn. Nay. Shepard. Aye. Vandenberg. Nay. Okay, so I am to item number 10. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve a resolution establishing the Johnson Drive design concept for improvements between Knoll Avenue and just west of Lamar Avenue that includes all the components approved by City Council at tonight's meeting. Of those components, I have two. $140,000 for the upgraded lighting and the $85,000 for the planters. Am I correct? Okay. Um, seat walls. Mm -hmm. Seat walls. Yeah. The seat walls. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I made the motion. Sorry. Sorry. Can I ask a question? Yes, Mrs. Gibbs. That's Mrs. Cream. I mean, I'm sorry. Mrs. Cream. We're just the same. We're interchangeable. Um, I need clarity on the interceptor and the vote because I think it's really confusing. Well, um, the interceptor's I, not part of it. So. The, the interceptor's not part of it. And I was going to, I was going to just, before you get to the resolution, understand that all the plans that we presented, those options that we did in March, all that basically is gone. Is gone. Yeah. And we will start back with a new set of preliminary engineering studies because the preliminary engineering study that we did to basically continue the Rock Creek and the floodplain remediation was the best option of the five that we explored and have to submit to SMAC was the interception, interceptor option on Johnson Drive. So as it relates to any future stormwater work, we're starting over. It's basically your day one. And the soonest that you will get to any other stormwater, I'll tell you is We'll have to finish this study with Fairway, and let's say we were able to do that in 18 months, and then we'll have to come back with some idea as to what you want to do with the downtown corridor. If you want to come back and remove it, um, since it, since this is a cars project, if it then, let's say you came back and you wanted to remove it, and somehow that became the project, I couldn't get new cars money, nor would smack repay the city for any street repair caused by putting back the interceptor. So you have to kind of know that that's gone and we start over. Okay. I mean, it almost doesn't make sense to do the street work if we're not going to do the stormwater work. Mayor. Mr. Andre? Uh, I think the stormwater work is critical to the city. I've said this before. It's previous means. There's no reason for me to repeat those comments here tonight. Um, we're without the stormwater work. We're still looking at spending nearly seven million dollars by est my estimation on downtown mission, as the mayor just said. It's really questionable to a lot of folks to spend seven million dollars and not fix the stormwater. I cannot support a Johnson Drive project that does not address the stormwater. I would like to move that we amend the motion on the floor to put language that is in section three as currently presented before us into the motion resolution into the motion that Ms. Gibbs made. So I make a motion to amend Ms. Gibbs to put section three, which is the storm which is the interceptor and the five it's item well it's it's number two on what was in here. It's section three in the resolution that's in front of us. The resolution that we've been looking at uh, all month long. Uh, so I Again, I move that we amend the motion on the floor to put section three of the resolution. Put on the interceptor again, then. Yeah. Yeah, basically that's what I'm moving, but I'm put to put it back into the, the amendment well, or the uh, motion. I, we just, we, I think we, that only as a point of order, I think only a person who voted with the majority on that motion can make the motion. I'm not. So did you vote no or yes? The, he voted yes. Yes. The the no votes were Calgary, Kring, Quinn, and Vandenberg. If one of those four 
want to bring it up for if one of those four want to bring that up to put it in then we can have a second so I can't on it. move to amend a motion on the floor this motion has not been made <laughs> this was one of the risks that Susie and I talked about and sort of what I arrived at is we had these nine motions if there was somebody that was in the minority it would take someone in the majority of one of those that was voted down or up, how we want to view it, to bring it back up within the body of the resolution at the end. I understand the procedure on that. If we wanted to bring a motion back up, um, I guess the, the, the question here is, am I bringing a motion back up that was previously made, or am I making a new motion to amend a motion on the floor? And I guess that we put section three well, back in. We've, we've got two. Uh, um, That's fine. If, if that means one of you guys could make I mean, you, 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 or Mr. Vandenberg could make that motion to modify. I'd like to modify the motion and amend it back to my first amendment, which, you why can't. I'm in the minority. Not on that one, you weren't. Well, no, she, okay, um, just procedurally, you can't do that whole jump at one time. Okay. So you can make the motion for reconsideration. To, to to put, yeah, you can make the motion for the reconsideration on this. Someone who voted with the majority on that $5 removal could also make a motion to amend. It's the way the rules work. I didn't make them up. So, is that, so are you wanting to go ahead and make your motion? No, I'm in the majority on my amendment, and that's the amendment I want to stick with, so... It has to be somebody on the the people that voted for the five dollars. Only need to bring it up. Uh, no, only you can bring. Only one of you that voted on the interceptor can bring the interceptor back up again. But I can. But is it? Bad but he man? could bring up the taking out the five dollars. Well, but M Mrs. Kring lost. She was in. She was on the no vote of her amendment. Or she lost. She was on the losing side of that, so she could bring that back up. No, no. no. She was on the winning side of the inter of the interceptor vote. She was on. She was on the vote. No. She the, voted the vote no on the interceptor with five dollars. She was on the losing side of removing the five dollars. So she can bring the interceptor up, but she can't bring up the removal of the five dollar ERU. Mr. Shepard. Madam Mayor, I would like to make a and listen, folks. Um, if you think this is easy all the time, it's not. And this is what this is what committee meetings oftentimes look like. And uh, the political process isn't always for the faint of heart. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit like uh, watching sausage be made. So it is what it is. Um, so I'd like to make an amendment that I was on the prevailing side that voted in favor of the $5 ERU stormwater utility fee being implemented with the 2013 budget year. I would like to amend the motion on the floor to remove that $5 ERU stormwater utility fee for budget year 2013 with the, and I think that's all I have to say. I don't think I have to say anything about deferring it to 14. Uh, I'm going to remove it. Just remove it. Correct. Second. All right. Second. Can okay. I second? <coughs> you can second. Anybody can second it. Or Starting. Just as a question, I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm confused. Well, I thought Dave and I voted the same on that. So how can you make a motion on this, but I can't? Make a motion for the $5. For the $5. All he's making the motion is, is to take the $5 out of the interceptor. So basically he's making the motion that uh, Debbie Ms. Kring tried to amend. Right. We're back to Mrs. Kring's motion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, so we have a motion and a set a motion and a second to remove the five dollar ERU a month ERU from the interceptor. Correct. So we're, unbundle that. So we're getting ready to vote to fund to approve the interceptor in the design, but not fund it with the ERU. Uh, we're getting ready to say to take the five dollars out. On that interceptor. But we're so you need to go with the interceptor. Right. Right. So it's just. So that's why I said I think. I think, I think Debbie it. needs. To, if you want to talk about it again, you have to bring up the whole thing, and then he can go ahead and bring up an amendment to it. 
Yeah. You have to you have to bring up to remove somebody in the prevailing on the interceptor vote has to bring it up to discuss it, and then he can go ahead and bring up an amendment. Okay. So I can go ahead and reiterate the initial language. So it's on the record that I'm saying that I'm making this motion with the five dollars in it, but then we won't no. he'll make a second amendment that changes it. Right. Right. Provided, that that for it, provided there's a second. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Madam Mayor, I move the City Council approve the Johnson Drive interceptor as described in Section 3 of the proposed resolution at an estimated additional cost of $2.3 million to be funded by an additional $5 a month ERU stormwater utility fee for a five-year period starting in the 2013 budget year. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Shepard. Madam Mayor, I'd like to amend the amendment to remove the $5 ERU increase for budget year 2013. Is there a second? second? All right. So. Okay. So now what happens is we, we vote have a discussion. On, we have well, we're going to have a discussion, but then when we vote, when you vote, the vote's going to be on taking the five dollars out, uncoupling it with the interceptor on the area. Okay. Now there's discussion. Madam Mayor. Yes, Ms. Cowdery. Are we just taking the same vote we just took again? We're, we voted on the $5 ERU, and then we voted on the interceptor. And now we're voting on the $5 ERU removal, and we're voting on the interceptor? Yes, it was brought up by some people so we're just doing prevailing. So we're just doing it twice? No. No, the interceptor yeah. failed. We're doing it again. Yeah, but we're, are so we going to try to vote on it again? Believe. Is that what you went down? We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Well, the first There's is we're voting on, on, on an amendment to remove the $5 increase. We did that already, right? We, we did that already. Mm-hmm. And so, right but the person in the prevailing party well, has brought up it. that they want to revisit that. Okay, so, they so we're going to vote on it twice. Okay. That's pretty much it. Okay. There you go. Madam Thank Madam. you. Yes. And Mr. the reason why we are voting on the amendment and the amendment to the amendment is what Mr. Andre said, which is, how in the world can you spend $7 million on Johnson Drive in downtown Mission and not address stormwater at the same time? You have to do both together. And if... As much as I say if you're going to do it, you've got to make the tough decision to tell folks how you're going to pay for it. I'm willing to defer it to 2014 so we do downtown mission the right way. For God's sakes, we do the west end and the east end. I mean, we have spent all kinds of money fixing our infrastructure on those two ends of town, but yet we continue to ignore downtown mission, and this is the opportunity as a council to demonstrate that we are going to make the right investment and so that's why we're discussing this again. Just right. as a correction out of what Mr. you said, Quinn. you certainly could do uh, all the repairs without doing the interceptor. You can't say that you cannot do that without doing the interceptor because you could do it without including the interceptor. Okay. Just as a clarification. No, you could, Pat. Okay. Yes, you could. It is just... But with the caveat of, but with the caveat of what Mr. Scanlon said too, to at what cost? Because if you look at all of the preliminary, I got your design. I just want to clarify. No, okay. And then the recommendations of our engineers and what councils work through that it's the best cost solution for the community. Okay. Any other discussion? Well, I've, Mr. Vandenberg. Just to reiterate my points that I made before, I've looked at what the. Uh, Improvements would be without the interceptor. There are stormwater improvements that would be made along Johnson Drive. And I think, in my opinion, those improvements with the decreased amount of time that it's going to take in order to do the project with the removal of the interceptor, removing the interceptor from the project does eliminates the fact that we would be spending an additional $2.3 million, which would be, would be put onto the backs of the residents of Mission at some point in time, might not be this year, but at some point somebody's going to have to pay for it. So I'm just completely against the interceptor. That's just my opinion. So. Okay. All right, Mrs. Gibbs. Um, I don't know how many of you saw the letter that Sharon Miller from Art Glass Production uh, sent to people. She has a business down on Mission by Firewalk uh, on Johnson Drive, and she wrote this long letter. She asked me to read the letter. I will not do the whole letter. But if any of you are interested in looking at it, please come up here, and you're welcome to read it. But part of it says, whether we're renters or property owners, businesses or residents, the expense to correctly make the improvements and do them completely all at one time is minimal compared to doing nothing. 
She said 10 years from now to go back and dig everything up, who knows what stormwater regulations will be like. It will undoubtedly cost much more and nothing will get accomplished and Mission will still have bad roads, water problems and street issues. She says it's important to the future of Mission to preserve, improve and maintain downtown business. And her last paragraph says, I'm proud to tell people my business is in Mission. My customers like the closeness of the highway connection. I like knowing my neighborhood businesses. It's exciting to see changes that make a city become a place where people want to be. And it's refreshing to be in a city willing to endure the pain-taking measures necessary to fix issues that have been overlooked for far too long. Okay. Yes, Mr. Andre? I'd like to say I've been around long enough to see it all, but I'm clearly not there yet. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, almost speechless here at, at what I think we're about ready to pass and vote. The words that resonate so loudly in my, vo in my head right now, and it's always dangerous to have a conversation with yourself, is Mike Scanlon's advice to us over the years on countless times, you never issue debt until you know how you're going to pay for it. And to the credit of this council over the years, as much uh, flack as they have taken and we have taken, uh, I don't remember an instance, at least since 2005 and, and more, most likely during this administration, where we have ever issued debt without knowing how we're going to pay for it. Now, technically, the amendments on the floor are not issuing debt. I get that. But financial experts will also tell you when you're outside of government spending decisions when you talk about personal finance, that you don't go buy something that you don't have money to pay for. You don't go buy on credit card. And this city, during the recent election cycle, has taken a lot of flack for being accused of spending on credit cards. I disagree with those opinions, but I understand uh, folks who feel that way. In my opinion, if we go forward with this option, we're spending on credit card because we have no idea how we're going to pay for this project. We're trusting that the council next year will figure it out. That's silly. I cannot support that. So for what it's worth, no. <laughs> and Laura, I would like to ask Mike um, your opinion of doing this. <laughs> well, I know what you're going to say, but I think we all need to hear it. Uh, Councilman Andre is correct. Um, anytime that we've entered into a project or a set of projects, we've always done our best to identify those resources that we will use to pay for it. As it relates to, to uh, this vote, as it relates to the $5 ERU, um, I think you have to be fully aware that if you don't vote for it now, that you could very well be having to vote for that $5 ERU in a year. And I don't think I've hidden that from anybody. I've told them, you know, the Gateway Project is proceeding. It looks like it could get to fruition. And there could be revenues that could be used to help offset some of this expense. But if that doesn't happen, you have to be ready to meet the obligation. Because once you put the interceptor in there and it's designed, that's what we're building. Thank you. The amendment on the floor right now is whether to remove the five dollar ERU from as a funding as the identified funding source for the interceptor. For the year twenty thirteen. For the year twenty thirteen. 